Hi everybody, welcome to the number one episode of Happiness in Motion. You're going to start uh, receiving some of these video blogs, or I should call video chats, where I'm going to be inviting stars of our community, entrepreneurs, teachers, coaches, doctors, um, holistic practitioners, etc. And the goal of these videos is just to connect you with these best professionals in town and therefore you can reach out if you need any help in any of those areas. So today I have my very first guest, Carrie Berry, the founder and owner and a coach of the Corner Boxing Club in Boulder. So meet Carrie Berry here. So all I wanted to do in in this video it's kind of to share with you how Carrie came to this place of turning into a very successful entrepreneur owning um, the corner and also working with many um, organizations around Boulder area and she's just through her teachings through her wisdom helping a lot of people in this town a lot of people not just to achieve health happiness but she's teaching people with Parkinson's, for instance, how to just move better and improve their quality of life. So I consider her one of our rock stars in Boulder, and I want you to experience a little bit of who she is, get to know her a little bit, and hopefully um, take some of her classes and, um, and learn from her. So Carrie, welcome. Hey, thank you, Alex. So happy to have you here. So yeah, congratulations on this place. Thank and you. Doing this and following your path and your dream. So that's, I think that's amazing that yep. you're doing this now and now you're able to share your talents and your art with everybody else in this community. That's the goal. Um, thank you. So summarize your story with boxing first. Uh, a bar fight, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, about 12, God, oh no, 17 years ago now, um, I tore my left ACL. I used boxing as part of my rehab, fell in love with the sport through a series of events, was able to get on the U.S. national team, um, competed at a very high level, was captain of the U.S. team for many years, 10-time um, national champion, and then as I was on my road to London Olympics, I tore my right ACL, and that put me on another path and another journey. Um, and, which was very fortunate for me and now I have my boxing club that I co-own with my wife Kirsten mm -hmm. and we've been open almost two years now. Excellent. So that leads, uh, leads to my next question which is how you handle challenges and you, you kind of answer already. It sounds like by having injuries and as an athlete we know how difficult it can be to have an injury. An injury in, a, uh, in an athlete's life came into things from like ending their careers to depression, sickness, and a lot of unhappiness. But we can already tell that Carrie um, handled this challenge and transformed them into success. And that's another reason why she's sitting here. You know, I want to always have our guests sharing how they handle challenges because we all have them. And what separates us from creating success in our life is how we handle this challenge and turn them into um, great experience and um, you know live our dreams. Yes. So um, tell us a little bit about the corner. What is what is what you do there besides teaching people how to box and um, what what is the mission of the corner? So I'll start with like why we call it the corner. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people think it's because we're on the corner of Fifty Fifth and Central and <laughs> Boulder, but that's not it. Um, it's what the corner of a boxing ring represents to an athlete. It's a place where you always come back to in between rounds. We start the round there. We get the support we need. We get the rejuvenation. We get the kick in the butt that we need. Any input from the coach. That's where we get the communication from our coach. So I wanted to create a space that encompassed that, that support, the place you always could come back to and get whatever you needed. Um, whether it's a kick in the butt or, you know, some positive words, you mm -hmm. would find it there. Yep, love and it. And it's even come like our icon, you're actually looking into the corner of a ring and we have the wings. So I wanted to start with that feeling mm -hmm. and then also to build off of what has always gotten me to where I am in my life is a community around me. 
you know, the reason why I have the gym is I have a very strong community of people like yourself who kind of cheerleaded behind me and helped me, you know, have the confidence to do all the great things I've done. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create an environment where we work together and we have a strong community and everybody feels welcomed and inclusive. So um, that was really important because Boulder can be such an exclusive place yep. where I wanted it to be inclusive. That's awesome. So anybody's welcome there? Do you require any level of fitness for somebody no. to take you one of your classes to do a private session with you? The only thing that we expect out of people is that they're willingness to help another person. Like yeah. that's, and you know, all levels, even like our intro class, we tell them like, if you need to take a round off, you take a round off. And you know, and I'm teaching them how to wrap hands. I tell them this is gonna be tough in the beginning, but you're gonna grab somebody else who knows what they're doing and ask them for help if you don't, can't get one of us as coaches. And then in six months, I'm gonna expect you, Alex, once you know how to wrap your hands, to help Jane Doe wrap her hands. So that's the big piece. That's and, awesome, yeah. that's awesome. So um, tell us a little bit about your work with the Parkinson's patients. Mm -hmm. So I was really fortunate when I was at another gym here in town. I met an individual, Terry, who had Parkinson's and he introduced to me um, Rock City Boxing, which is a boxing program for individuals with Parkinson's. Um, Science-based, they've done the research, they've shown the benefits. Um, that out while you even doing a similar high intensity exercise, mm -hmm. boxing beats it. Wow. You know, as far as with the neurodegeneration, the mm -hmm. dopamine effect, I can give it really technical, but I won't. Um, but we saw the improvements there. So when we had, um, we're writing our business plan for the corner, that was a part of it, like having a boxing program for Parkinson's patients. And my only regret is we didn't start it till about 14 months into the gym last fall. I wish we would have done it right off the bat. Wow. Because it's been such a powerful um, addition to our gym, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the individuals, whether it's my athletes getting to work with them. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great community to have in. They work hard. They work together. So. That's great. So I want to talk about challenges again because one of the goals of um, to have certain guests here is to share with you um, what gave them the strength to turn their challenges into pursuing their dream? So tell us a little bit about when or what happened in your life that gave you this wisdom to, for example, tear an ACL. Like how do you get to that point? Like, okay, I have an injury and you could choose to be really down on yourself, be hard on yourself, but instead you chose to look at the opportunity what taught you that in your life? Yeah. Um, there's a couple of different events. First, um, being kicked out when I was 12 from my home and moving around every six months and living with different families. That taught me, taught me the importance of relationships and networks mm -hmm. and you know helping other people. Um, tearing my left ACL, which at the time I thought it was the worst thing ever to happen to me. And how um, old are you when you... I was 18 when I tore the left one. You know, I was being recruited by Duke and all these big schools for softball. And once I tore that left ACL, it kind of like died down. I'm like, oh, my life's over. And then here, a couple years later, I'm on the U.S. national team, which I wouldn't have gone down that path had it been for what I thought at the moment, the worst right. thing that ever happened to me. Yep. And, you know, and over and over again, I had those circumstances, you know, of big losses in certain situations where I had to bounce back from and... And boxing will teach you a lot about yourself, about trusting yourself, mm -hmm. trusting your instincts. Um, but then always having that team around you and that support of a coach um, was really important. So then once I tore this ACL, um, I'll kind of give you a little backstory what really helped me too, to like stay focused and kind of come back to this isn't the end. Uh, yes, tearing this one might have been the end of my road to the Olympics. It wasn't the end of what I could do in the sport was the doctor who took care of me that morning, she did my physical. Because we get a physical before every single one of our bouts. And I noticed she'd been on a couple she'd been on a couple of trips with me when I was on the US team. I noticed she had a wig on. I was like, Oh, you know, Doc, how are you doing? Like what's going on? She's like, Well actually I'm going through chemotherapy for the second time for breast cancer. Wow. And it was kinda like took me back from one moment because here she is going through chemotherapy and but she's here taking care of me. Yep. She's here making sure this taking care of all these athletes at this tournament, um, very important role. 
So, you know, we, we said our, you know, goodbyes and all that, and then later on that evening, at my bout, when I tore this ACL in the middle of my bout, she was the one that, she was the only one I would let take care of me, even touch me. Um, and, like, having her in that moment made me realize, like, yes, this is very unfortunate. I'm not going to the Olympics. I knew at that point from my background in sports medicine that this one was torn. Um, but so what? I'm going to be, I'm going to live. Six months from now, I'll be fine. I'll have my surgery. I'll go on, I'll rehab, I'll, I'm going to be healthy, yep. you know. Yep. It's, it really helped me put everything in perspective. So going into opening the gym, you know, it, it made me have, have that bravery to face the vomit moments, as Brad Feld would say. Mm -hmm. I was able to face those. Mm -hmm. um, and then having the support of my wife, Kirsten, and mm -hmm. her knowledge and her experience mm -hmm. and her skills, um, you know, the worst thing, hey, we... We close in a year and we go on and yep. we do something else. And yep. so, life moves on. So be correct to say one of your secrets is ask for help, ask for help. support, create a community. A community. And the second is to look at the worst case scenario, right? Yeah. What is the and worst case scenario and accept it. As I always <laughs> say, you know, put the worst case scenario and then what if you don't do it and see which one you can live with. For me, creating this dream, it was about like, okay, I opened this studio and it might fail in a year and I can live with that. But I cannot live with the idea of no. never having, have created this. So it sounds like you are in the, the, the yeah. same place, yeah, uh, taking the risk and know that if it doesn't work, I'll be all right, just like Terran ACL. So, you know, as you... your ego, like you're able to set your ego aside because yeah. the biggest thing I think we fear when it comes to failure is what everybody else is going to think. Absolutely. That's what holds us back is, oh, if I do this, then they're going to be able to say this or this, or I told you so. Yeah. Which you have to be able to set that aside and realize the people who really care about you are yep. going to be the ones that will be there to help you back up. Yeah. And I think we both have such strong people in our mm -hmm. lives that are going to be there for us. Absolutely. That we... We were able to set aside our ego and, yeah. worry, and those worries. And we know well that the fear of having a failure, unfortunately, is paralyzing a lot of people mm -hmm. from creating their own dream. And um, it is a very sad thing to say. So I guess our message that we can yeah. give together is fail yeah. if you have to. It's okay. Yeah. If you read any, any biography about the very famous entrepreneurs in the 1900s or even in our era now, every book, all their stories, they're going to share how many times they failed. And sometimes we just forget how many times they failed until they succeed, how many books they had to write until they had their bestsellers, yeah. or how many companies they opened and they failed until they created a company that succeeds. So um, I think that's the main message here that we want to share with you. It's uh, whatever your dream is, your vision, just pursue it. And I always like to clarify that if you don't know what your vision of your dream is, don't be scared. All you need to do is to be open to explore and get curious. Watch YouTube videos. Go talk to people like Carrie. Go box with Carrie. And maybe that's going to open up some uh, of your creativity or come work with me every time, or find a coach in your own community, somebody that you trust that can help you. But like the other message here is you are not alone, so don't deal with um, any challenge in your life by yourself because people love to support. So as you mentioned your ACL tear, you made me think a, a, a lot about the young athletes that we see in this town, and I talk to a lot of parents who have young, uh, young athletes um, you know, as their children, and they have tremendous challenges when they get injured. So, share a message here, maybe to these young athletes, or even all the athletes who are facing an injury. Um, share a message that can take away and maybe encourage them to uh, have a more positive attitude. I think the big thing was when I went through my injury, um, and the way that I dealt with it was becoming taking on another role in the team. I played team sports at that point in time um, when I tore my first one. And it was, okay, now how can I be a better teammate? How can I help my team? So take the focus off of myself and my own woes and figure out how I can uplift my team and still be a part of that um, 
that program and really make the positive changes because I was no longer uh, the competitive athlete on the field. Mm -hmm. I had to become competitive in another way, so who could be the best teammate? Right. Um, and then also looking out to other people around you that have gone through a similar injury or a circumstance and lean on them. Ask them questions. Yep. You know, seek them out because I'm sure they're going to be there. I know I've had athletes um, in my role as a sports medicine um, practitioner and athletic trainer when I worked at the high schools. When I had a kid with an ACL tear that was going through rehab with me, I was the hardest on them. I made sure they came back and mm -hmm. came back stronger. So. Nice. So there's always things to do. Yep. Yeah, to improve and to um, see what the, the injury will lead them. And maybe they'll become a stronger athlete or they find a different path. So um, how can people find you in this town? Oh, you Google. No. Google <laughs> Boxing Gyms. It's uh, myself and uh, Front Range Boxing Academy, which is another great boxing gym in Boulder. We're two totally different gyms, so I always tell people, you know, try both of our gyms because we're different in our approach. We're different even when you walk in the doors. Um, but the, the cornerboxingclub.com is our website. Mm -hmm. um, my email is coach at the Corner Boxing Club, which I thought was a great email until I made people have to write it. <laughs> and it takes forever. But um, if you just Google boxing gyms and just Google, we come and up. I will share all your information yeah. um, in this video. And thank you no, so thank much you. for being here, sharing your uh, very inspiring stories. And you know, I'm sure you inspire many people every day. And uh, hope to have you back here and um, share more stories with our audience. Thank, thank you, you, Karen. Thank you, guys.